bring another situation, however, if you have a continuously tunable photon energy and you excite your core electron not to excite it outside to your detector, instead, you excite the electron to an unoccupied state within your material. This is very important, and that gives all the difference between this technology, the, between this technique uh, and the XPS type. So you excite your electron. However, you need to make sure the electron is still within your sample. So this put a very strong regulation to where the electron could go to. That means you need to have an intrinsic state that is unoccupied. So your core level electron could be excited up to there by tuning your photon energy. So that gives another excitation with the electron still within your material and the next step is all the decay process that we'll touch in the next slide. But this kind of controlled excitation over here will give you an excited state releasing all different kinds of signals in either, as I mentioned, two types, in either the electrons or the photons. And that gives you all the core level photon spectroscopy, uh, all different types that we will cover in this talk, including the X-ray absorption spectroscopy emission and RIGS. Uh, as I mentioned, don't worry, uh, especially the name of RIGS, if it's, it sounds uh, not familiar to you, we'll go through that. So let's take a look at the relatively easier case of the X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Uh, so the uh, principle of X-ray absorption spectroscopy is to measure how much or the percentage of the X-ray photon get absorbed by your sample. And that gives you the so-called absorption coefficient. And uh, that is supposed to be your signal you try to detect. So the most straightforward way, of course, is if you have uh, 100 photon coming in, for example, and then you have uh, 50 left, picked up by your detector after penetrating through your sample. So your absorption rate is 50%. It, it sounds very simple, right? So if your detector, put a detector over here, you'll have 100 roughly, uh, and then going through the sample uh, to some, if the electron, uh, if the photon started to be absorbed by the sample at the absorption edge I mentioned earlier. Uh, so you will see a drop of this, uh, through photons, the number of photons picked up, and then you will see a drop. So the x-axis over here is really what you can tune by a synchrotron beamline of the instant photon energy. You increase, sometimes you can do the decreasing also. You increase the photon energy step, step, step by step, and then you will see to at a particular energy, uh, the transmission rate will go down, and then you, you know at this energy is your absorption edge and you start to absorb. So your transmission photon number is getting low. So in reality, however, this is very hard to measure with soft X-rays. The reason is uh, soft X-rays, the reason we call it soft is because it interacts so strongly with the electrons. So the penetration depth is too shallow. So how to handle a material in the nanometer scale or hundreds of nanometer scale, essentially the same kind of sample requirement as a TEM. However, as you will hear again uh, later in the in this LS101 uh, tutorials, uh, the stick the forecast X-ray could be used for this kind of experiment, and it's an extremely powerful tool uh, for both the microscope, microscopic probe, and also even uh, 3D tomography these days, doing the transmission mode. So for the majority of the samples that we cannot do the transmission mode, uh, especially if you have a bulky material, you cannot really mute it down or you cannot, you, you want to put uh, directly the sample under the X-ray to watch it. Those are the so-called uh, reflection mode experiments for the X-ray absorption. What do we have is, so the X-ray, because this if this is too thick, your detector will pick up nothing behind it in the transmission mode. However, if your X-ray hit the sample, they will excite 
they will put the energy from the photon into your sample. They will excite the sample system. And then through the decay process, the sample will release either the electrons or the photons into the detector. This is what we are talking about and what we will be focusing on today by watching the release of the electrons or the photons. And then you can get the so-called X-ray absorption spectra over here and why this could happen and why you could do this by watching this. So let's look at what is this excitation and decay process uh, and, and then we will see why the X-ray absorption could be collected. Uh, almost all the conventional X-ray absorption spectra, including today's experiments, uh, they are all collected in this way, not directly uh, to measure the uh, uh, transmission rate or to measure the uh, uh, absorption coefficient, except for the six sum, as I mentioned. Okay, so if you have a tunable X-ray, we've seen this image before, I mentioned you need to control the energy of this and excite the electron to the unoccupied state. So every electron is still within the material. This is very important for this kind of technique. So after the excitation, your system goes into the so-called excited state. And this is obviously not stable because you have an empty state over here, all those higher energy electrons, they try to relax back to the core uh, this is called core hole after you excite the core electron, right? So the decay process could release either the electrons or the photons because they can decay and release the energy to the outer shell electron and the electron absorb the energy drop out uh, to the outside detector, the OG electron. Or when the decay happens, you can have a photon directly emitted out. If your instant photon is X-ray, aside from here to the blue state over here, if this is in the X-ray range, your released photon will also be in the X-ray range. So, and these two kinds of techniques give you all the terminologies and names you read all the time. If you read a paper talking about X-ray absorption, if you counting, the total number of the electron yield, that's a PEY. And if you count the total number of the fluorescence of the photon coming out, that's a total fluorescence yield. So you count the electron or you count the photons. That gives you the two most popular conventional X-ray absorption spectral uh, terminology, the PEY, electron yield, and the TFY. Other than this, if you focus on a relatively uh, a defined uh, energy range of the outgoing electron, uh, you can get the OG electron also, uh, only the OG electron, that's the OG electron spectroscopy, and if you, uh, detect the uh, outgoing electron yield at particular excitation energy close to the absorption edge, you can get the resonant uh, photoemission spectra. So all of these are from the same kind of fundamental principle that is the relaxation or the decay transfers the energy to the electron and then the electron comes up. So, and the fluorescence yield part depends on how you define the energy range of the photon you can choose. If you choose all the number of the photon coming out, that's a total fluorescence yield. If you cut out the photon number within a particular range, it will become the so-called partial fluorescence yield. And those, I will touch this later when we talk about rigs. These, but these are all based on, again, the same kind of principle of decay to the core hole by releasing photon comes out. Over here, I want to mention an important concept here. That is, because the photon has momentum, so the excitation always follow a selection rule. So quadrupole signal, you do see that in hard X-ray excitation, but the majority signal is always from the so-called dipole selection rules. That means your orbital momentum needs to change. Well, if you excite S electron, 
it goes to P. If you excite the P, if this is P electron, it goes to B or S. So that gives the whole benefit of the soft X-ray comparing with hard X-ray. The soft X-ray, like for example, oxygen K or 3D transition metal L, they detect directly the P and the 3D valence state. Those are the states we care about the most, of course. And the soft X-ray, this excitation uh, give you the most direct probe, the excitation to those states. And I want to emphasize again, for the X-ray absorption spectra, what we collect is a total number of these emitted particle, either electron or the photon. We don't care what is the energy or what is the photon energy of this outgoing particle. If we do care, that becomes all the different kind of spectroscopy. The reason we want to collect all of those is we have a strong assumption that is the more particle comes out means the more photon get absorbed because the more photon get absorbed, you generate more core hole and then the decay will be more and release particle will be more. So uh, you can tell the assumption is very strong and they are more or less true for the electron yield, but they are often not true for the fluorescence yield. That goes to a more detailed uh, discussion on the so-called fluorescence uh, distortion. That's a more complicated technical issue. I'm not going to talk about here. But the EY, electron yield, and the FY of the X-ray absorption does give you the benefit of two different probe depths. One is about 10 nanometers, the other could be 100 to 300 nanometer probe depths that gives you the contrast of the surface or near surface signal. So, okay, now if we go one little step further, uh, if we don't not only count the total number of the photon, we actually try to differentiate what are the photon energy coming out from this decay process. And then we can again, more or less categorize those uh, kind of photons into three kinds. One is the excitation of the electron to the unoccupied state, the same electron comes back. That's an elastic decay. So the same X-ray will be emitted out. And the other kind is if you have the valence electron state, the red color valence occupied state decay back, you will get the so-called X-ray emission spectroscopy from the uh, for, for, from this occupied valence state electron decay. And if you have this elastic decay, but through the decay process, they were they have they, they triggered some other excitations, so the decay will follow a so-called energy loss excitation, energy loss type of excitation. That's what we call the resonant inelastic X-ray scattering. Well, I'll give you a much better explanation in a dedicated slide. So, but what I'm showing here is in general, if you count the total number of the particles coming out that gives you the X-ray absorption spectroscopy. However, if you resolve the type of photon coming out, that gives you all the different spectroscopy, including X-ray emission spectroscopy to detect the occupied state or the rates that we will chat a bit later. So uh, 